Welcome inside the three technique, everybody, a college football podcast at the intersection of the X's and O's and the Jimmy's and the Joe's Mitch Mason, Trey Reeves, Garrett Turney, fellas. We haven't done an emergency podcast in a while, but we've got one for you today. Colorado is leaving the Pac-12, heading back to maybe the grass is greener on this side, the Big 12. Uh, They had a brief hiatus uh, since uh, 2011, but they're back, baby. 2024 per the Action Network. Pete Thamel also broke the news. Colorado's coming back, and uh, fellas, folks are folks are asking: Is Prime the greatest thing to happen to Colorado before he's played it down? I mean, the branding certainly doesn't hurt Colorado, right? I think this is you know a huge move, obviously for the Buffaloes. This is seismic for the big, uh, Pac-12. Uh, our SS Klyovkov, as Mitch likes to say, is taking on serious water at this oh, point, if not yeah. completely down with the Titan submarine. And listen, it's it's a great move for the Big 12, I think, just first and foremost. I think this is great for Colorado. It's great for the Big 12. It's a very, very alarm bells are going off on every single Pac-12 campuses, boardrooms this evening. But yeah, great move for Colorado, great move for the Big 12. For the Big 12 to get a really solid brand in great TV markets, a passionate fan base when they're winning. Obviously, they're buying uh, the stock a little bit lower than maybe it was 20, 30, 40 years ago um, when the Big 12 and the, or the Southwest Conference remnants and the Big 8 were merging, and Colorado was obviously part of that. But I think the stock is about to take off with Prime at the helm. So a great move for the Big 12 uh, and a great move for Colorado to find some stability. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, when you look at the move, we've been critical of Colorado and the the hype this offseason, just trying to make sure people kind of keep their expectations in, in an appropriate place, right? You know, all the people saying that, you know, the quarterback is going to win the Heisman and they're going to compete immediately. Uh, that's probably overblown, but, you know, it's it's fair to say at this point, you know, if they're heading back and if they're, you know, going to go back to the Big 12, that's, that's a much better conference long term. Um, with, with everything that was happening, you know, at their spring game and all, all the hype they're getting around that, it sure seems like Colorado's moving in a great direction. And yeah, you're right, Mitch. You know, if you're not counting that spring game, Prime hasn't coached it down so far. They haven't even gotten a chance to get up off the ground yet. So, you know, this this could go one way or another. But at the moment, it looks like they've secured their spot in the Big 12 and, and maybe get to abandon ship at the right moment. I think this could be the perfect moment for Colorado to leave the SS Klyovkov, which, yeah, I mean, I I feel like it's it's sunk. Um, I feel like it is at the bottom of the channel now. Uh, Per Breck McMurphy in the Action Network, Colorado will receive a full thirty one point seven million dollar media share of the Big 12 revenue next season in 2024. So financially, the, the stars were aligned for Colorado as well. Um, You know, we can kind of react to the competition, to what this means for the Big 12 as they try and earn a seat at the big boy table with the SEC, with the Big 10. But I think the question that everybody wants to know is what's next for the Pac-12? Guys, as we're sitting here recording this just five days ago at the Pac-12 Media Days, George Klyovkov got up there at the podium and said, we are not worried about anybody jumping ship we're we're not even considering it um and so now as colorado prepares to leave and and to be very clear as of recording this colorado has not officially left they do have a board of regents meeting that was uh suspiciously scheduled for tomorrow if you go and look at what that release says the meeting agenda in all caps says action So uh, there is clearly something afoot in in Boulder, (laughs) Colorado. Yeah, they're not they're not getting together just to, you know, uh, exchange pleasantries and and swap hunting stories. Um, So it is at this point very much assumed that Colorado to the Big 12 is official again. Multiple people are reporting this now. It is just all but, uh, you know, waiting on the signature, essentially. So if you listen to the podcast last week, I indicated that there were some rumors flying around that UConn was getting ready to announce uh, their addition to the Big 12. They're independent right now. I checked with some sources on that, and they said, you know what? You can go ahead and believe those rumors. Those rumors, while we don't have a timeline on them, likely are to be true sooner rather than later. So UConn could also be getting ready to join the Big 12 soon as well. But the question now is, is 
is there another team from the Pac-12 that wants to jump ship? And guys, if you're on Twitter.com, well, not, it's not Twitter.com anymore. If you're on X, stupidest name ever. <laughs> there are a lot of rumors flying around that there is a non-four corner school getting ready to leave as well. Um, folks are speculating it could be Oregon. Folks are speculating it could be Washington State. Do do with that what you will, but when you guys kind of survey the landscape and you know the the bombs have have gone off, um, what's ringing in your ears right now? Uh, well, what's ringing in my ears is that there is a deal coming very soon for the Pac-12. It's it's coming very soon. We've been told this for months that clearly the Legendary. TV deal is on its way. And it, don't worry, guys, it's coming. It's coming. Um, and because it's coming and because it's not here and because they've been saying it for months, this lets Colorado bail. This lets them kind of have the excuse to, to say, yeah, we really need to do this. Because, you know, for a little bit, you might be able to convince a lot of people within Colorado that staying in the Pac-12 has their best interests in mind. But I think pretty clearly now just the instability out there in the Pac-12 is it, it has to be the reason for Colorado. You know, they've made this investment in their program. They went and got their coach that they think is going to bring them to the top. You can see that they're starting to invest and, and really care about their program and bringing this back into, you know, sort of the, the, the limelight of college football. If you're going to do that, you can't do that if your games aren't on TV. And so I think for, for Colorado, a lot of this just has to do with the fact that there was no real guarantee of certainty. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's, I don't know if it's just unfortunate for the PAC 12, but they haven't had their ducks in a row. And so if you're Colorado, you've got to look after number one. And I think that they're doing a good job of doing that. Um, landscape out there in terms of the Pac-12, pretty bare. I mean, what do you do at this point, right? At this point, you, you had rumors about SDSU. You know, San Diego State, they're, they're not coming along. They're, stick, you know, they're staying put in their conference. Um, you, you're losing Colorado. There's, you know, maybe other rumors of, I know, SMU could be an option, but I mean, guys, like, what, what's happening out there? I can't give you that answer because it doesn't look like anything good is happening in the Pac-12. It looks like this is a great time for a lot of the teams to start jumping ship. If not, they're going to get left behind and, and almost cannibalized by the rest of college football as these other conferences look to clean up the scraps. Well, and since last summer, when this whole media saga started with the Pac-12, every day, every week, every month that it has dragged on, this just became more and more inevitable that one school that had options was going to jump ship and was going to figure out a way out of the conference and just into more stability. So you're absolutely right, Garrett. This is Colorado just finding stability, not wanting to wait around while they're assured that a good deal is coming and not wanting to end up with their games on the CW or ION or some other random obscure network that their fans may or may not know how to access. So it, I mean, We've documented this really well on this show, I think. You can go back and watch our commentary on this whole media rights saga. This is not a George Klyovkov problem. This is a problem that has persisted since for well over a decade for the Pac-12, ever since they failed to kind of court uh, the Texas schools in the Big 12 and Oklahoma and Oklahoma State uh, all those years ago in 2010. It's just been a downhill situation for the Pac-12, and they have no one really to blame but themselves, and no one really to blame but – um, you know, Larry Scott and the decisions that he made um, to really put themselves in a corner where they're on a conference network that no one can get or no one cares to even demand to get from their cable providers. And they don't have a streaming option. They don't have a situation where their schools feel secure. And so it would not shock me if we see two, three, four, five, six other programs with options either jump to the Big, T Big 12 or maybe a couple of them jump to the Big 10. We might see, I mean, guys, I was thinking about this. I was listening to another podcast. This is pure speculation, by the way. But I was listening to another podcast previewing the Pac-12 for football this year, completely unrelated, came out before any of this news was breaking. And just even talking about schools like Stanford and Cal, like there's this overtone of, you know, this is last year with UCLA and USC. Stanford and Cal are in a really interesting situation too, where they've got to decide how much they – actually care about competing at football at the highest level right like so yeah. you've got you've got those two those are probably two of your bigger brands at this point remaining in the conference along with Oregon and Washington and they've really got to decide just 
you know, with the situation that they find themselves in with what their student body probably wants to prioritize, do they want to care about being at the top of college football? Do they want to align themselves with a more academic conference or do they want to, you know, stick it out and try to preserve the tradition of the PAC 12? That's all pure speculation. That was just, you know, food for thought, but all of these schools now are looking at Colorado and saying, well, they were the first one. We didn't want to be the one to blink. We didn't want to be the one that jump shipped and brought the whole thing completely down. But now that one's out of the bag, it, there's nothing stopping just a complete mass exodus. And and it could be a complete mass exodus. I mean, you know, looking around, reading, again, speculation and rumors. Uh, Trey, you mentioned Cal and Stanford as schools that could potentially have options. What's scary for the Pac-12 is you're starting to see reports that a lot of other schools not named Cal and Stanford are on the horn with the Big 12 tonight. We're also starting to see reports that the Big 12 was set to allegedly vote on admitting Colorado in 2024. Starting to see some reports that they probably have the votes almost unanimously, if not unanimously. Like So for the Big 12, it's an obvious slam dunk. Hey, yeah, and I'm willing to bet a lot of money that they're not the only one. They will not be the only addition for 2024. No no. They will not go into that year with an odd number. They will yeah. add at least one, if not three or five more. Yeah. Which, which could be insane. I mean, guys, think about the timeline. Just a couple of, uh, well, this time last year, right? We're talking about, oh my goodness, is the Big 12 dead? Where, where does the Big 12 go from here? Texas and Oklahoma are leaving it high and dry. Yep. Right, your mark is coming on, right? Hired, literally called out of the bullpen from the Brooklyn Nets organization. Yep. Um, you know, he, kudos he, to him, by the way. Just, <laughs> I, I think he, he deserves all the credit in the world for taking his conference. Like, we right. can talk about, you know, the death of a historic conference is obviously something to, you know, it, it's not a good look for college football and all, what we think about are the problems for it. But for Brett Yormark to take that situation, and completely flip it on its head, right? Com like Big 12 was dead man walking, like you said, Mitch, after Texas and Oklahoma left. And now they're a power player. They're ripping programs from other yeah. more historic conferences. I know it's kind of a homecoming for Colorado, but it it's just amazing to, Garrett, to think about. Garrett, pull up that tweet that I sent um, sent over because I, um, I think that's important to talk about. And then you'll pull it up if you're on the, the video side, if you're just listening Stu Mandel had an interesting tweet basically saying that the most impressive thing is that your mark came in and not only added new members uh, to this conference, but when he structured the new media rights deal with ESPN, they, they worked in a pro rata for power five members who joined, they would be grandfathered in to this yep. agreement. Meanwhile, the PAC 12 hasn't secured a dime for playoff contenders like Oregon or Washington in you know what's supposed to be the new look Pac-12. Colorado finished dead last in the Pac-12 last year, and they've already, should this go go through and be official, they're already going to be secure, uh, securing a 37 or $31.7 million payday based on media rights. That, I, to me, is one of the most impressive maneuverings in sports history that Brett Yormark has done. He's come in, he had a vision, he had a plan, and he's executed that plan. And, you know, he hasn't made excuses, right? When he spoke at Big 12 Media Days last year, he spoke about having eyes towards expansion and, you know, kind of considering all possibilities and not just going after football, but going after basketball and supporting other programs in, as well. And guys, like, that's exactly what he's done. He's not just positioning this conference as a winner on the football field, or at least, you know, one of the big, the big players on the football field. These schools are going to compete in basketball and other sports as well. And to me, a conference that we thought was dead in the water a year ago when they lost their two flagship programs, honestly, maybe stronger than ever with more teams that have a more equal seat at the table, I think the conference can move forward kind of in uniformity, right? Whereas the, the issues with Texas especially have been well-documented where Texas has said, nope, listen, we're going to take care of y'all. Y'all pipe down and, and we'll figure things out. 
now there won't be that alpha dog in the room, that flagship program. And I think that might be better for the Big 12's health overall. Absolutely. And yeah, if you know your realignment history, the big gripe when Colorado originally left the Big 12 was unequal revenue sharing. It was Texas, Oklahoma, and a couple other schools, A&M, I think, Missouri, ultimately Nebraska, getting more than other schools because they quote unquote deserved more. But now you're seeing more of a true conference, right? You're seeing more of a true actual schools that want to be there. They're excited to be there. And they are, you know, in the case of Colorado, I think it's really awesome. You know, we talked about realignment. We talked about USC, UCLA, abandoning all these traditional rivals. Colorado's going back to their traditional rivals. They were in the big eight for decades before uh, it ultimately became the big 12 and ultimately they moved to the PAC 12. So, and there's a Stuart Mandel tweet if you are um, on the YouTube side of things. So um, yeah, I, I think it's awesome. Like that's another whole side of this thing that, you know, college football traditionalists can rejoice with this move. It's not something we can often say about realignment, but Colorado's coming home. They're, they're getting to play Kansas, Kansas state, uh, not Nebraska anymore. That was one of the big rivals, but Missouri or, uh, Missouri's oh. SEC, of course. <laughs> I just brain farted there, but you, you, you guys get what I'm saying. Kansas yeah. State, Kansas, um, you know, Iowa State, the, these, these traditional programs that they got to play. Oklahoma State for um, decades, we were in a conference with them. So that's a really cool side note for me. Yeah. Somewhere, Eli Drinkowitz's ears perked up. He went, "What?" They did, yeah. <laughs> they, no one told him that they had this, to move this back might to the be. Big to your point, this might be not only just a coming home moment, like where with a banner over the door. This is like a Felix Baumgartner. Like, yo, this is this is impressive. There there will be a parade thrown in in Colorado's honor. Now they got to compete. They got to back it up on the field, right? They have a year to kind of get the kinks out with Dion. Um, but by twenty twenty four, if they continue to accrue the talent that they are. I think they're going to be an immediate factor, at least that you have to, you know, kind of consider, right. When you're talking about teams that, that can get to Arlington. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's another good brand. I think long-term, like I said, off the top, I think the big 12 is buying a little bit low in the stock right now, but uh, there's big moves that could cause it to take off in no time. And guys, I just want to know, like, what do y'all, th- where do y'all think the PAC 12 goes? We, we kind of teased this a little bit, but, do they try to add a San Diego state? Do they try to go hat in hand to, I don't know, uh, all their big brands and say, we promise we're going to get something done. We're going to be really innovative. Just trust us. Like, what do you do if you're George Klyovkov at this point? Just uh, you do the thing where you go underneath your desk and you put your hands over your head and then you, you cover your head because it's over. I'm sorry. Your conference is over because at this point, what you, there's no move that you can make that I can, I mean, Outside of poaching from another conference because that deal actually was coming and it's amazing and you can convince some other power conferences teams to come play for you. There's no move you can make because think about in terms of out, you know, in the West, just regionally, who could they try to invite that makes the difference? Let's say that they, they are, they are really America. handicapped by that. Their, their geography is right. really handicapped. Well, let's talk about it. This San Diego state, let's say that they go. Let's say that they could go and find a way to pick up, you know, Air Force and Boise State. And I, I mean, I'm even running out of teams, you know, San Jose State. So I'm just starting to run out of teams where you're you're thinking about them as big enough brands to matter. Right. And, it, and it's sad. I'm not trying to insult any of the teams out West, but just, you know, you have a smaller brand that's not going to move G5 the needle. They're, they're not going to move the needle sure. for anybody nationally. And, and especially when it comes to TV deals. And then you have to also take it on the other side and say, well, you know, if we're talking about how Colorado is getting to, you know, reunite and get some historic rivalries, there's a lot of other teams that could have a similar claim. I'm thinking a team like Utah could be out the door and and head over to the Big 12 for the chance to go and reunite and play BYU, right? And then start to kind of do that and grow a little bit on the national stage from a bigger, you know, more exposed conference that goes a little bit more sea to shining sea. So, I mean, outside of those, and I mean, I guess you, we've talked about SMU possibly the Pac-12, but like at that point, you're going to have to worry about the leaking because the, we, we have not battened down the hatches on the USS Klyovkov. There, there is still plenty of leaks. 
There, there's plenty of holes in the ship. It's it, right now their best solution is doing the Jack Sparrow, where he's you know sailing into port and he steps off onto the dock right as the boat sinks. That that's exactly what the situation. I think is that's right what now. Colorado yeah. just did, Gary. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a chance that that's it. But like this is it. That what else does the Pac-12 do? I mean, and, and I'm curious, and if anyone's watching and wants to leave it in the comments, feel free, because I have no idea what the Pac-12 does from this point. Uh, well, so literally breaking news as we're live recording this uh, from Pete Thamel. He's confirming the Big 12's presidents and chan chancellors voted unanimously Wednesday night on a conference call to accept Colorado as a new member. Colorado still has not formally applied for Big 12 membership. That is expected to happen tomorrow. So as wow. this podcast is you know, being released, as you're listening to this, um, Colorado is likely applied for that membership. So truly a formality at that point. Um, so this is happening, which is, that is a fantastic uh, graphic right there. Whoever made that. <laughs> yeah, whoever. Let me give him actual credit here. Uh, that, Greg Welch amazing. or whoever you got that's that from. That's BYU account. Our, our director BYU, um, <laughs> you know, we've broken or I say br we've broken. We've talked about a lot of breaking news on this podcast. This isn't the most shocking or groundbreaking. I mean, like we've talked about it. I remember our group text when USC and UCLA announced that they were yeah. saying yep. goodbye to the Pac-12 and we thought it was some elaborate hoax. Um, but I think I think given the trends in realignment, to have it truly come to fruition tonight um, and, and just very shortly before kickoff of the 2023 season, right? Uh, right before we do our Pac-12 preview. Also, exactly. we're recording exactly. that this weekend. Yeah, we get to eulogize another another football team in their current conference. I think, <laughs> you know, the, the last thing that I'll say before we can, you know, have your final thoughts and then get out of here, this is just highlights how stupid setting non-conference games like 10 years out is and then yeah. you know uh, front offices saying oh well we you know we can't be taken by surprise and we we need to do this to plan like colorado is moving an entire conference in a, in a fiscal year. year right like the the big 12 schedule whatever that was going to look like for 2024 like if you got a head start on that sorry like throw the homework out the window <laughs> we, we got to go back to the drawing Right. And so, Colorado, I just pulled it up. They did have a home and home scheduled with Houston, um, Kansas State, and I'm looking for if there's any others. Oklahoma well, State. Oh my God! Those year. are all out the window. Well, TCU this year they had the home and home, and now it's just going to keep going with the conference matchup. So yep. that's fun. I wonder, yeah. wonder how Long Island plays when they get to Boulder, Colorado on an impromptu non-conference game. <laughs> Sharks, baby. They're in Waco this year. They're in Waco they to play the there Bears. You so, yeah. you know, just now, just hop on over to another Big 12 member uh, and, and play them. <laughs> I do um, have one other thing I haven't seen talked about yet, and I want to run it by you guys, because the unspoken implication of this, with the way that we're setting up the, the college football playoff for 2024 – the top six conference champions get automatic entry, correct? Mm -hmm. We're still we're still rolling with that. So if that doesn't change, we no longer have a that was designed to have the power five, including the Pac-12, <laughs> and one group of five school winning their conference and getting the the golden ticket. But if we now if the Pac-12 is gone and we have a power four. Does that mean like we're going to have two group of five schools in the playoff automatically? Do we think we change that? Is that good for college football? I know that's a bigger topic than we probably have time for on this video, but what do you guys think about that? Uh, Ladies I and gentlemen, welcome Washington State to the college football playoff. <laughs> well, I mean, it opens the door for like, I, I think whoever wins Coastal the American Carolina, is almost the uh, uh, auto bid. Yeah. And, and so like, and here's a really good question with that, given where some things are, who makes a playoff appearance first, UTSA or any of the other schools in Texas? Great question. Yeah. Frank, Frank the Tanks SN, eligibility SNU, is up that position I mean, here, though. Yeah, yeah, SMU could do it, yeah. It, yeah, it, SMU's it, looking it, it, really yeah. strong. Shout it, out to it, Joe Hoyt, yeah, who previewed <laughs> SMU on our last our uh, our last guest podcast. Yeah. Um, the, the ripple effects are just going to be huge. Like, we, we're, we're definitely yeah. not done seeing this. If the Pac-12 is indeed dead, which flag. I think is what we're all predicting, that is – the most seismic change in college football probably in the last 30 years. 
that a Love power that. five conference would just up and die. I, I, I wonder how quickly we see just a rapid destruction of the conference of champions. Um, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate like we've talked about, but it is what it is. It's a reality. Colorado saw the writing on the wall. They got out first. Now, how quickly do others follow behind them before that door shuts? And get a welfare check on Bill Walton because he is not doing okay this evening. <laughs> if he's even in a right mental state to even know what's going on. That's fair. Well, all right, guys. Uh, let's wrap it there. Uh, emergency pod in the book, Colorado, heading to the Big 12. Um, if you are new to the channel, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you might be, like and subscribe to the podcast. We really appreciate new folks like you joining. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll get ready to see you guys in the next one. For Trey Reeves, Garrett Turney, I'm Mitch Mason. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, so long, everyone. Gracious, yeah. how about that?